In this video, we will talk about variations of sine and cosine functions y equals a sine of bx and y equals a cosine of bx. Here to the left we have the graphs of basic sine and cosine functions and both of them have the amplitude of 1 and the period of 2 pi. The sine function passes through the origin but the cosine function passes through the point 0, 1. Now in the forms that we will discuss in this video there is a number a in front of the function and a number b in front of x. Number a causes the graph to stretch or to shrink vertically and number b causes the graph to stretch or to shrink horizontally. The amplitude of each of these functions is found by taking the absolute value of a. So again, the amplitude equals the absolute value of a. For example, in the function y equals 2 sine of 5x, the amplitude of this function is 2. This means that on the graph the highest value of y will be 2 and the minimum value will be negative 2. And in the function y equals negative 3 cosine of 7x, the amplitude is positive 3. So whatever number we have in front of the function, the amplitude is always represented by the positive of that number. Now let's talk about this number b and let's see how this number affects the graph. As I said, because of this number b, the graph will stretch or will shrink horizontally. When b is greater than 1, the graph is shrunk horizontally by a factor of 1 over b. This means that if the basic sine function has the period of 2 pi, then a sine function with b greater than 1 will have a period less than 2 pi. For example, let's consider the function y equals 5 sine of 4x. In this function b equals 4 and to find the period we will multiply 1 over b by 2 pi. Then 1 over b multiplied by 2 pi equals 1 over 4 multiplied by 2 pi which is pi over 2. So the period of this function is pi over 2. Now let's see the graph. So here we have the graph and because the amplitude is 5, the maximum value of the function is 5 and the minimum is negative 5. The function completes one full cycle from 0 to pi over 2. Now here I would like to explain more why we have to multiply 1 over b by 2 pi to find the new period. The period of the basic sine function is 2 pi. The function y equals a sine of bx completes one cycle as bx changes from 0 to 2 pi. To find the values of x for which the function completes one cycle, we have to solve the following inequality. bx has to be greater or equal to 0 and less than or equal to 2 pi. To solve this inequality for x, we need to divide all three sides by b. On the left side, 0 divided by b is 0. In the middle, b and b cancels and we get x. And to the right, we have 2 pi over b. So the function completes one cycle when x changes from 0 to 2 pi over b. Then we can say that the period of this function is 2 pi over b. And this is the same as 1 over b times 2 pi. So now we can say that if we have the form y equals a sine of bx or y equals a cosine of bx, then the amplitude is absolute value of a and the period is 2 pi over b. Now if b is a number between 0 and 1, the graph is stretched horizontally by a factor of 1 over b. For example, let's have the function y equals 5 sine of 1 half x. 
in this function b is one half and this is a number between zero and one. Then to find the period we will multiply one over b by two pi and again this is the same as two pi over b and we will replace b with one over two. Now one divided by one over two is the same as one times two over one, which is two. Then two times two pi makes four pi. So the period of this function is four pi. Now let's see the graph. As we see here, the amplitude is five, but now the graph is stretched horizontally and the period is four pi. Now let's solve one more example where we will find the amplitude, the period, the coordinates of the five points over one period, then we will make the graph. Let's have the function y equals negative three cosine of two x. The amplitude of this function is the absolute value of negative three, which is positive three. I will start the rectangular coordinate system to the right. And we know that because the amplitude is three, the maximum value of the function will be positive three and the minimum value will be negative three. Now to find the period, we will use the formula 2 pi over b. In this function, b equals 2. Then 2 pi divided by 2 equals pi. So now on the x-axis, I will plot pi. From here, to find the coordinates of the five points, I will split this interval into four sub-intervals. Now we need to find the lengths of each of these sub-intervals and we will do that by dividing the period by four. So then the period divided by four equals pi over four. So each of these sub-intervals has the lengths of pi over four. Now we will start by finding the x-coordinates of these five points that will be on the graph. The first x coordinate will be zero. Now to the left I will construct a table and we will have all these values for x and y in this table. So here we have the table and the first x coordinate is zero. Now to find the next x coordinate we take the previous one which is zero and we add a quarter period. Then zero plus pi over four is pi over four. So this is gonna be the second value of x in the table. And now to get the next value, we take the previous one, which is pi over four, and we add a quarter period. Pi over four plus another pi over four is pi over two. So let's write pi over two in the graph and pi over two in the table. For the next one, we will take pi over two and we will add pi over four. This will make three pi over four. We will add this to the table, three pi over four, and then the last value in the table will be pi. And indeed, if we take three pi over four and we add another pi over four, we will get pi. Now we have to find the y coordinates of these points and we will find them by replacing the x coordinates in this function. But before we do that, recall that the basic cosine function passes through the point zero comma one. Now in this function, because we have negative three in front of cosine, the graph will cross the y axis at negative three. So the graph will pass through this point and then at pi over four will be zero and then we'll go up to positive three and then back to zero and then down to negative three. Now let's see if we are right 
by replacing all these values in the function and finding the y coordinates of these points. When x is 0, y equals negative 3 cosine of 2 times 0. Here, 2 times 0 is 0 and cosine of 0 is 1. Then, negative 3 times 1 will be negative 3. We will add this to the table. And indeed, now we see the point 0, negative 3. Now, to do all the math here, we could either use a calculator, and the calculator has to be in radian mode, or we can use the unit circle. Now, let's continue with the second row. y equals negative 3 cosine of 2 times pi over 4. Then, 2 times pi over 4 is pi over 2, so we will have negative 3 cosine of pi over 2, and cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and negative 3 times 0 is 0. We will add 0 to the table, and then we will continue with row 3. y equals negative 3 cosine of 2 times pi over 2. Now, 2 times pi over 2 is pi, so we will have negative 3 cosine of pi. Now, cosine of pi is negative 1, and negative 3 times negative 1 is positive 3. In the next row, y equals negative 3 cosine of 2 times 3 pi over 4. This equals to negative 3 cosine of 3 pi over 2. And we know that cosine of 3 pi over 2 is 0, and negative 3 times 0 is 0. So let's add 0 to the table. And in the last row, y equals negative 3 cosine of 2 times pi. And cosine of 2 pi is 1, and negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. Now, we will plot each of these points, and we will connect them to form the graph. The first point is 0, negative 3. The next one is pi over 4, 0. Then the next one, pi over 2, positive 3. Then 3 pi over 4, 0. And pi, negative 3. And now, let's connect them to form the graph. So then, here we have the graph of the function y equals negative 3 cosine of 2x. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please subscribe, leave a comment, and thank you for watching.